Let's begin. Hello, this is one minute early, but I got three viewers and I'm sure we'll get a few more. I'm going to glance over at the chat every once in a while. If you have a question, you can put it in there. And if you're watching this later, that's fine too. So I got the links on this post, but I'm actually going to delete this post to keep things clean because all the links are in here. What we're going to be going over is today's assignment and also just a few general things. So as you may have seen earlier, I had a link for office hours. That's going to be every Thursday or Friday whenever there's a B day or whenever we have e-learning. But I deleted it because I want to keep things uh, free of clutter. And I'm going to actually delete this too right now. And use everything here for reference. So I open it up, even though I have the same thing in the tab right here. And here's the video you're watching right now. Here's the playlist. If you ever need a video, a lesson, whatever, it's going to be here. One thing I'm doing this quarter is the same title in PowerSchool, if you see an assignment going to have the same title on a video and the same title on classroom. The only difference is classroom. Uh, the school asked us to put a date on there right at the beginning to make them easily, uh, you know, ordered and everything. So this is going to be the same thing in the grade book and the same thing right here. And if you ever miss one, you can hopefully miss, uh, mix and match and uh, instantly tell which goes to which thing. So today's reading uh, is going to be the story, which I already have open. I don't know why I keep clicking links I don't need. Which, if you're in the room, we looked at a little bit um, together on Tuesday. Was it Tuesday? I think so. And we'll do the same little overview. And I have some questions, and I'm focusing on certain things for the questions. So, um, this story... It's written in 1938. It's set, it doesn't say, but we can assume it's probably set in a similar area to the author. The author lived in New York. Um, he was a poet. And you may have seen some poems by William Carlos Williams. He has a famous one uh, called This Is Just To Say. I have eaten the plums that were in the icebox and that you were probably saving for breakfast. Forgive me, they were so sweet, so cold, or something like that. It's a very well-known poem uh, because it's so short and snappy and the lines are just one or two words and it's a sort of, you know, all lowercase style, that kind of thing. He has another one about a red wheelbarrow that you may have seen in a literature book somewhere along the way. Uh, but he was also a doctor, and this is in the days when doctor was not a guy in an office with... Uh, insurance deals and all that kind of thing but a doctor was a guy who would come to your house and bring his bag with a little stethoscope and a few common medicines and um almost more like uh you know it feels like the 1800s even though it's not just because the the world was so different uh not that long ago so this guy's going to a house and all he knows is the name and as we see in the first few paragraphs it turns out that they're a poor family they're uh, probably a step or two down in the social ladder from our doctor. Not that the doctor is a super rich guy, but he's middle class, and they are a little lower. And you can tell from their language, and you can tell from a few mentions of money and other things. And turns out we don't really care about the parents in this story. They're characters, but they're almost just like tools that are used by the real main characters, which we got the doctor, who's our narrator, and the girl who I believe pretty early on, it tells us her name is Matilda, uh, right here in page two. And so we got our doctor and we have Matilda and they are the real players in the game. And what we're gonna talk about in our first couple assignments is when you have a conflict, you have this, 
escalation of back and forth. So if you have a desire, and every character must have a desire, they have to have a motivation, they have to have a goal, otherwise they would just sit there and do nothing. Um, if you have a desire, you're going to try to achieve it. You're going to try to make it happen, but you're going to try the easy thing first. Okay, like uh, if you need money, then you'll probably try to ask your friend or check your wallet or check your uh, credit card. You're not going to like rob a bank first. You might do that 10 steps later if you're really desperate and you really need it and nothing else has worked, etc., etc. Uh, but your characters are going to try the easy thing first and they're going to have to be pushed into the crazy stuff. Sometimes it only takes... Uh, four pages like this story, but sometimes it takes longer. And so our guy, what does he want right at the beginning of the story? What's our our narrator's uh, goal here? Yeah. Yeah. He wants to be able to get the parents to help him with like all the information that they were on. Yeah, he wants to get a little bit of info. And it's very general. It's like, hey, how you feeling? Do you? Uh, uh, it turns into, is your throat sore? But at first, it's just like, you know, what's the situation? Do you have a fever? He just wants to ask basic questions and, uh, you know, make a diagnosis or even get the first step toward a diagnosis. Okay, it's probably his natural personality he's probably a curious guy but it's also just literally his job they paid him to come and do that but he doesn't start by like getting out the crazy tools and start uh, putting cells under a microscope and sending it off to the lab and, you know learning new realms of science he just says hey can you stick out your tongue can you answer a question Okay, so whenever you have a character who wants something, they start with the simple thing. If I, in real life, am thirsty, I'm going to start with, oh, is there a bottle of water within reach? And then it's done, and then I can move on. If there wasn't, then I would go one step beyond. I would maybe go out in the hall, fill up the water bottle. If there wasn't that, then, you know, as we would go, I would have to expand and try harder and get crazier, but... Um, you got to remember that the characters are not trying to make it interesting. They're trying to make it easy on themselves, and it only gets interesting when it has to. Now, as it goes on, he is frustrated. He is blocked. He is uh, messed with. Because it turns out the parents don't tell him much. And what they do, even when it's true, it's not helpful. Like, they say, oh, she says her throat don't hurt. It's like, yeah, but is that true? You know, and he thinks it's probably not. Or, you know, oh, you know, we gave her some things, but, you know, it's not doing much. Uh, they don't tell him anything that's super useful. And even when he's doing the, the right stuff, the easy stuff, it's not helping. So he has to try harder. And by the end of the story, he's doing some crazy stuff. But he doesn't start there. Okay, you got to keep that in mind. Now, the other half, the girl. And by the way, sometimes when you write a story, there's a good guy and a bad guy and a main character and a non-main character. But in this one, I would say they're both totally equal. The doctor is the narrator, but the girl is just as important, just as good, not a bad guy. We, we, we love her, okay? We're going to try to have empathy. I'm going to try to see from the character's point of view. What does she want? That's when it gets a little harder. Because, and I'm going to spoil it now. Okay, if you haven't read it, pause the video and go read it. If you're in the room, too bad. Um, turns out she's sick. And she knows it. And she's been hiding this. And that is not logical. If she were a robot, she would say, excuse me, doctor, I'm sick. I need to be taken to the hospital because I probably have diphtheria and other kids in the area have died of this. And, you know, I got to maximize my chances, even though it's scary. Um, but that does not happen. 
So what does the girl want if it's not to maximize her chances? What do we think? People in the chat, anything? Yeah. To not see a doctor, that's part of it. I mean, this is already bad. Like, that the parents brought in a guy, this is already uh, bad for her, right? She's, she wished, what does she wish? What's the, th what's the thing everybody wishes most of the time is to just coast, to just, things will go away, right? There's a problem, it's fine, it'll go away. All I have to do is nothing. If you're driving along and the little uh, light, check engine light comes on on your car, what do most people do? Nothing. I, maybe if I wait, it'll go away. You know, maybe it's nothing. Maybe if I keep driving, it'll be fine. Uh, they don't like instantly stop and put up the hood and start looking at it. Or they don't instantly go to a mechanic. Some might if they are super comfortable with that and they do it every day but uh, most people would say I don't I don't want to change my routine I don't want to spend money I don't want to have that uncertainty of what's going to happen you know this girl is in my opinion and we don't know a thousand percent because we don't see her uh, narration but she wants to get back to normal what if what if the doctor goes away and I'm fine and then we can avoid all of this scary stuff. What if I don't have to go to the hospital? What if I can forget about those kids who disappeared because they never came back? Um, turns out that's not the best strategy, but uh, we gotta keep in mind that hardly anyone ever follows the best strategy in uh, story or real life. Um, and that's okay. You shouldn't read a story with a uh, uh, nitpicky kind of attitude to go, oh, well, she's wrong. Why didn't she just, uh, you know, take her own temperature and display her own uh, symptoms? Because she's scared, and that's okay. Um, I want to get to these questions because... Like I said, in the next couple assignments, I want to get into like the step-by-step -step escalation of like, oh, it's your turn and you do this, but now the other person does this, and then the other person does this, and they build up until something crazy happens. But for this, I wanted to start with some basics. Just what are they like at the beginning, and what are they like at the end? Okay, so at the beginning, what does the doctor want? Well, that's what we talked about. He wants to make a diagnosis. He wants to do it as easy as possible by just asking nicely and when that doesn't work he has to go to bigger things what does the girl want well the way i phrase it is that she wants to go back to normal and hope it all blows over if you phrase it differently or if you have a different view that's fine as long as you have a backup citation kind of thing for it you know what is her goal she wants to make the doctor go away and how does she uh start which is just non-cooperation. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to open my mouth. I'm going to uh, give you nothing. And when that doesn't work, he keeps, you know, getting closer and asking more. Then it gets into like, oh, I'm going to physically swipe at him and I'm going to turn it into a big melee fight. Uh, but of course you don't start with that. That would be very silly if the doctor just walked in and uh, started fighting a child. That would be a very strange story. Um, what does each one do to mess with the other's goal? That's where we have conflict, right? He wants something, and it's very reasonable. She wants something, and it's pretty reasonable too, but they interfere with each other. And if they could both be happy, that's cool, but they can't. One of them has to... Uh, stop the other one. One of them has to frustrate the other one. One of them has to uh, try to win, which hardly ever works. I wouldn't say either one really wins in this story. And then at the end, what does he want and how has he changed? Um, that one's maybe easier because he's the narrator and he just says what he's thinking. And at the end, what does she want and how has she changed? 
um, you might have your own interpretation. You might just stick with the facts of what it says. Or you might say, actually, you know what? He's seeing it a certain way, but he's actually probably uh, biased, and I actually think this other thing is going on. That's okay. Um, so we're not getting into the super details, step by step, um, what they do, but just how are they at the beginning, how are they at the end. And uh, this video is getting to be about 15 minutes, which is what I'm aiming for. I don't want to make these super long. So I'm going to look once more for questions in the chat. I'm going to ask once more for people in the room. And otherwise, I'm going to end it and give you guys time to work. I'll put in a grade for the first assignment, the um, survey, and I'll give you time to work on this, etc. Anybody? Anything? All right, then we'll end it there. Thanks. Oh. All right, I had.